Good morning, afternoon, whatever time you're watching this, and welcome. I hope everybody had a fantastic evening. I'm sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties today, so I'm going to actually just check on, I'm sorry, check on something really quick before we get started. Make sure that, yes, okay, making sure my sound is on okay. If you're watching this early, you're probably watching the replay, so give me a hashtag replay. Let me know that you are here. And be sure to leave any questions in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer your questions later on. I do go back and check the video throughout the week. I actually have my assistant check it out. Just And she lets me know if there's any questions that I need to answer. So feel free to let me know later on if you're not able to catch the live session. If it's your first time here, let me introduce myself. My name is Evelyn Knight. I am the host of the Child Care Business Coach podcast. If you haven't checked out the podcast, please do. I really fill the podcast with more business type of information to help you guys run your comp your child care centers. Uh, this my I do every Monday, which is our Mindset Monday, where I'm really trying to help you start the week off right in the right mindset. So if you're new to Mindset Monday, I have lots of them that I've been doing. I, I literally I. 30 or 40 of them so go back watch a few of them help with mindset their themes should be on there so if there's something you're struggling with your mindset and your thought process go back and look at them there's probably different things that can help you out to get your mind in the right spot say hi as you come in I see there's a bunch of you on here now so just say hi as you come in it does get lonely on this side of the camera um, I am also the CEO and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a coaching company that helps owners and directors learn how to manage their child care centers, streamline their processes, and find success while uh, maintaining high quality research-based standards. As a former director and as a child care center owner, I once upon a thought, time thought that it would not be possible for me to turn a profit and have high quality standards. I didn't think it was possible to maintain low ratios, have the supplies I need, and all the stuff I need in order to um, turn a profit. And I had no idea how wrong I really was. I just didn't know business. So many of us don't know what it means to be a business owner. And we are directors, we're moms, we're teachers, whatever, and then we go into this business thinking, oh, this is Chuck, I know how to run it, but we don't know the business end of things, which is my goal is to help owners and directors out there learn the business end so that we can also have successful businesses on top of our child care center, right? We love our children, we are all for them, but oftentimes we neglect the business side, which causes us to really struggle financially. It also causes you to be married to your center, right? Where do you ever feel like you're there 50, 60 hours a week, you're married to your center instead of your spouse? and you live there more than you live at home, those are the kind of things I help you with. I to help teach you how to manage your time so that you're not married to your center, how to duplicate yourself so that there's other people out there doing what you do so you're not the end all be all for your center. Very unhealthy. My background is in neurological psychology. So as somebody who spent 14 years of my life studying the brain and just mental health, very important to me to help center owners and directors take control of their lives so that you aren't married to your center, so that you don't have to live there, so it doesn't have to just weigh you down and be stressful. So if you feel like your center controls you instead of you controlling it, that is something I can help you with. I'm also a center owner. I do currently have one center that I own only. I have owned multiple centers. Um, at a time, I've owned four altogether. I've been an in-home provider, I've been a director, I've done everything, including being the cook at a child care center. So I know what it's like to be in every job at a child care center. Um, I worked in infant room for years, I've worked preschool rooms, I've done it all. I basically started my career in ECE when I was 15, so I know this business really, really well. Uh, a few years ago, I set out to learn how to be a business person. I was once upon a time a failing owner. I uh, literally almost faced bankruptcy. And when I did, I just knew I had to do something. And so I set out on a journey to learn business. So I basically just hired a business coach myself and I um, 
started reading a ton of books. I even got textbooks, like the textbooks that people would use to uh, get their MBA. I really just went out to teach myself. And I actually uh, learned that what it means to be a business owner, to really nurture your business. And I joke all the time that there's like two people living in my brain. I'm sure a lot of us have like several different personalities. I, I, there's more than two, but all the different personalities, right? And I have the director part of me and the owner part of me. And a lot of times they don't like what the other one has to say. And especially before I really learned business, I really had to hone in on that. And really, um, it was really hard. It was hard because the director in me would want to do this, this, and this. And then the owner in me would say, yeah, but you don't have the funds and you can't do this without this, right? So it was that constant back and forth about who am I, what, how am I going to wear right now? The director hat, the owner hat. And I didn't know how to compartmentalize that. So that's one of the things that I've learned how to do is comp compartmentalize being the director and the owner. The other thing I've learned now that I have my own directors and uh, I've owned multiple centers where I couldn't be the director at every center, I've just learned that we, there is a gap a lot of times between the director and the owner. And there's this difference in thought processes, right? And since I've done both jobs simultaneously, I really understand what that means. Uh, for a long time, my husband and I would almost, we would just, honestly, we would fight about it. it there's no sugarcoating it. Or he thought like an owner and he saw business. I mean, he's managed major, major corporations. Um, he's like been a manager for, he's in the car industry, car company that he um, worked for is nationwide. And he really, uh, manage their different stores. So he knew how to manage these stores from a manager's perspective, from a money perspective. And, and the training he went through is amazing through the corporation he worked for. So he would tell me all the time, you know, you need to cut this, you need to do this, you need to, and he was always focused on the financial part of it and the business end. I was focused on the director stuff and I was looking at the classrooms, but we need this, we need this, we need this. And it took me a really long time to understand and balance those two elements. At first I had no business owner in me. I was all director. And I can tell you guys, those first couple of years, we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in our childcare center. I mean, my husband was literally injecting, I mean, my first, I think two years, he probably injected $300,000 into our childcare center because I was thinking like an owner, I mean, a, a director, not an owner. But you, it just, no child care center can sustain that. No. So if you're an owner out there and you're leaving your director alone to do all the work, I can tell you that is a very dangerous thing unless your director specifically has an MBA or something like that. A couple of business classes in college is not enough. I'm going to say that again. Taking one or two courses in college about business is not enough enough. You cannot run a healthy business if you don't know how to run a business. And as taboo as it is in our uh, industry, childcare centers, they are businesses, you guys. These are businesses. Even if you're running a church, it still has to run like a business. I know like in our mindset, we get so stuck on this stuff that it's not a business and I can't turn a profit and which by the way is absolutely ridiculous. There is no other industry that you're going to go into and start a business and not expect to make money. Absolutely ridiculous, right? Owners, you're entitled to make money too. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to get out of that mindset, completely erase that mindset for owners that, oh, but we can't make money off of, no, we can, that's okay. Um, you can make money off your child care center. There, it is not fair. If you're a director out there, a teacher out there thinking, oh, my owner's greedy and uh, first of all, you guys have no idea. I'll tell you right now, you have no idea. The overhead in a child care center is huge. Secondly, why is it not okay? If your owner owned any other business, like we owned a dollar store at one point too, everybody expects an owner to make money, right? In any other kind of business. But for some reason in our industry, an owner who does turn a profit is oftentimes labeled as greedy, which is absolutely ridiculous. If you only knew the blood, sweat, and tears it takes to own a child care center and what kind of work goes on behind the scenes as an owner that you will never see. There's a lot of work an owner has to do that you will never see. 
you guys just make assumptions. I see it all the time when I'm working with directors that they are just making these assumptions and it is a false narrative that's in your mind that you got to undo. I mean, that is something that we really just have to retrain our industry on that it is okay for owners to make money. It is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're greedy. It doesn't mean that they're lazy and they're just making money. There's so much more that goes in. Again, say hi as you're popping in. I see a couple of you and I don't know if my comments are working. I did actually bring another device here so I can make sure that I see comments. And um, also if you want to ask me questions while I do this, I am more than happy to answer it. Uh, let's see, I do have a question that I missed. Let me turn this down. Uh, oh, hi Angie, good morning. So let me just give you guys a recap of what we're doing this week really quick and then we'll get back to that subject of owners and whatnot. Uh, this week I am going to be doing a free seminar for you guys on um, increasing enrollment in your child care center. I will be live every day this week at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, there's a lot to cover. Increasing enrollment is a huge subject which I'm actually writing a book on right now. And so I'm going to give you like snippets of it. Um, it's really, there's a lot into it. If you're one of my members, I, I have like, gosh, it's like six or seven hours worth of materials for my members if you're part of my um, membership program on just how to increase enrollment. And I have a ton of paperwork and uh, just the phone script and a lot of different things that I give you guys as my members. But I'm going to give you a abridged version today on increasing enrollment and if you follow the techniques that I'm teaching today or throughout this whole week you will increase your enrollment I'm going to give you guys enough for free that without being a member that you will be able to increase enrollment in your child care center um, it would be very hard for me to give all of it but it could just there's just so much of it I mean there's enough of it for me to write a book on it but uh, there there will be enough for you to definitely make and see a difference. The method that I'm teaching, I've used in my center, and it has actually helped me uh, get to the point where like now my center has a 300 child wait list. So that is something that uh, I will, will be doing this week, is just showing you guys basically the outline of how I got my center to a 300 child wait list. And um, uh, multiple centers that I've had one of the things I've been able to do is just build centers up sell them after they're built up fix them up sell it so it'll, I'll show you guys how I do that um, and then for my members if you want more detailed in the Facebook group I do have some of my uh, sessions recorded and uploaded there for you guys and also in our members um, YouTube page there's a bunch of different videos and then all the print materials that I have for you so if you need any information on that you can message me and either I or Allie will get back to you on that. Uh, but so every day this week, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be live teaching and building. It, I'm going to be building up starting at the very beginning and all the way through until they're enrolled. Uh, that I will show you guys exactly what needs to be done. So make sure you join me this week if you would like to learn about that. The more engaged you are, the more that you really, I will be posting some different homework things for you guys and a bunch of uh, just different information throughout the week to really just try to treat this like a course. The more engaged you are, the more you do, the more you're gonna get out of it. So make sure that you show up every day, even if you have to watch the replay, let me know that you're there. Ask questions, feel free to ask questions, you guys. That's what I'm here for, just to, I don't mind at all answering your questions. So uh, my assistant will be checking throughout the week too to see if anyone needs any help or ask questions about the enrollment process. So that, be sure to jump on there. But back to the mindset of ownership and just really focusing on your money mindset. We get so stuck on um, thinking that wanting to make money is greedy when it really isn't. It really it isn't being greedy. Wanting to have a successful career is not greedy. Honestly, a lot of us just want to be able to provide a good lifestyle for our families. We're not looking, most of us aren't looking to become multimillionaires off of our child care centers, right? I, some of you are, and that's fine. If you want to own a child care empire, there is nothing wrong with that. That is your prerogative, and nobody has the right to judge you for that. So don't allow that in your life. Don't allow judgment into your life. The other thing 
as you if you don't want to if you want it to be a nonprofit that's there's nothing wrong with that either you have to follow your own personal conviction and don't allow the outside world to tell you for a long time that's I've I've actually experienced both sides of the gamut on that one where I've owned a childcare center in a city that was very poor very depressed very small and I didn't want to turn a profit at that specific center I wanted it to be philanthropy work. A lot of what I do is just giving back, and I don't mind that. That's just who I am personally, right? I uh, a lot of my profits that I get from my childcare center, I reinvest into the center, and this company is where I make more of my income. But that is my personal choice. Doesn't mean that that has to be your choice. Doesn't mean you have to follow my model. First, I will teach you as a business coach to turn a profit, right? What you do with that profit is totally up to you. If that is your income, that's great. If you decide to save it all, that's great. If you decide to reinvest it into giving back to your community and your center, that's great too. It is all your personal prerogative. We just need to get you to that point where you can turn a profit and you're not in the red every month, right? And that you're also not married to your center and giving it all your time and energy. That's also very, very important. So. For me, one of the things I do is I do, um, depending on what the profit is, uh, I basically find other programs, how can I improve my center? How can I um, kind of reinvent the wheel? It's one of my passions is to try and reinvent this industry. And I use uh, the center that I own now, which is my baby center. I'll never, it's in my hometown. It's five minutes from my house. I'll probably never get rid of that center. But it, a lot of times it's an incubator. Uh, like for example right now I'm working with a behavior specialist who is um, just an amazing person worked for the university system for 20 years and we're starting a model where she's actually in my center three days a week three mornings a week and she just goes from classroom to classroom every parent in my center has to sign a waiver that they will absolutely allow us to assess their child and work with them if we find any kind of special needs we don't it's not an option Every single child coming into my um, center gets assessed. We And let me clarify, you guys. There's two different types of assessment. There's screeners and there's an assessor. It's assessments, okay? Screeners are like Brigance, ASQ. They're the short, you know, and Brigance, yes, it is short. I know, it doesn't feel like it, but it is. But these are the ones that are just doing like an, it's almost like an overview. Of everything right it's like a Google map that's just kind of giving you that overview the bird's eye view of what's going on and they are amazing and awesome absolutely want to use these in your center if you don't have a specialist but since I have a specialist we do assessments that really go in deep and it really is looking for every detail about the child trying to find any kind of hidden special needs that those uh, screeners miss right so they are really looking at every single aspect of development, which like the ASQs and the Brigands are looking for social, emotional, and basic. They're looking for basic stuff, right? Which is wonderful and needs to be done for every single center. in the, Every center in the world should be doing this. Every center in the world should be looking. Uh, there's so much we can do to help reverse damage if we can get to the children before the age of five. And there's and not just, I don't like using the word damage for that, but there's so much we can do to help facilitate their growth and learning so that they don't have future uh, struggles if we can get to them before the age of five. So all of you, if you're not doing it, message me. I will give you suggestions on the type of uh, assessments you can do to help your children or screeners uh, to just really help the children that need to be referred to outside agencies. Something that as childcare professionals we have a responsibility to do. But for us, we go even, even deeper, and we're really looking. And so I do have um, a behavior specialist on site three days a week who goes in, every child coming in our center. She will work with them one-on-one. -on -one. She also works with them in a group, and she goes into the classroom and trains my teachers on how to deal with this. So that's an example of how I give back to my center and where I put my profits in my center. I am... Um, happy with what I have I really don't need more income coming in so that's where I put it back in if that is not something you choose to do that is totally fine you guys 
there's nothing wrong with you taking home a profit as an owner. We have put our blood, sweat, and tears into our centers. That is why we became owners. We did not become owners to create another bill for ourselves. So that is just something really important to keep in mind and think about and not allowing judgment into your mind. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today is why hire a business coach? I actually work with two business coaches currently and if you guys knew what I invest in coaching, part of some of you would choke. Um, I just really, I know it's the difference. When I first hired my business coach, it was a Hail Mary for me. I was about to go bankruptcy and I met Christine and I just knew either I was going to make this investment, make it work, or I was going to have to file bankruptcy and lose everything. I was going to lose my center and then God knows if they come after my house and I just looked at my family and just knew we put so much money and everything that my family ever worked for into my child care center and I knew I had to do something to save it. It would just be so unfair to my family to just lose everything. So I met with Christine and which she's on a lot with me. Um, she, my members know her, she does a, a segment for us in my membership, but she, when she went over the information with me, told me she could save my center and do all this, I just kind of figured, you know what, I don't know if this is going to work, but what else do I have to lose at this point? I'm going to lose everything anyway, so what do I have to lose? And I just decided, okay, let's do this. Within a year, she helped me learn how to completely turn my financials around. And, and she's a financial coach, so she did the financial part of things. And it kind of made a light bulb go off in my head that, hmm, if her coaching could turn around my center, what can coaching do for my quality? What can it do for, and so those pillars started. So I started hiring and getting coaches to coach me on every little aspect. And I started reading a ton of books on business and looking at like the business uh, pioneers in our day and age and just reading. My library is actually up there across the street. I could tell you like all the different authors I've read and books I've read and like I said earlier, textbooks. And I really set out to gain knowledge. And I realized that coaching is the key. That was it. I, and I said it before, but according to statistics that I've learned as a coach and as a trainer by taking classes on how to train properly, how to coach properly, when you do a training class, you only implement 15%. It's anywhere from 5 to 15, but on average, it's 15% of what was trained, right? And this is why if you're one of my members, I tell you guys all the time, I just pound coaching, coaching, coaching into your heads when it comes to your staff. Only 15%. If you are a coach, you will see 80% of what you coach implemented into the classroom. Now, if you take training and coaching and combine the two, then you get a 90% return. So that's why, you know, we send our staff all the time to trainings and we they come back and we wonder why, why isn't anything ever implemented? They've been through this training and that training and nothing's ever implemented and I'm not seeing anything. It's because the coaching component is not there. Without the coaching, all you're ever going to see is 15%. If you want to change that statistic to 90, you need to go training and then coach. And so as a business owner myself and wanting to grow and be a better podcast person, a better coach, a better leader, I started hiring coaches. And I can tell you guys that do I have success in both my businesses? Absolutely. For those of you who know, I just started my podcast a year ago, and I'm already um, one of the top child care business podcasts in the country. I think I just ranked at number uh, three is what my podcast ranked at last time I looked. And how did I do that in one year? And how did I start a coaching company and get it to six figures in one year? It's because I have coaches. I have a business coach that helps me with that. I have my financial coach still, and I have a business coach, right? And that's what I bring to our market is the same code of coaching. I've taken everything I've learned, and I've turned it into something that is child care specific for you guys. I've made it so that it is for our industry specifically. So um, I, I've really just taken all the coaching I've taken and adapted it 
for the top care industry. I pay, oh gosh, let's see if I was going to, I know what I pay monthly, but I don't like to think of it as an annual basis, but um, over $36,000 a year in coaching. So when you guys look at what I charge on an annual basis for my program, I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's, you know, but it's really nothing. I mean, it is nothing. The higher level you go and the higher level you become in business, the higher level coaches you need to find. And they become very, very expensive. But if you are always surrounding yourself with people that are at your level, you're never going to rise, right? So one of my goals for you guys in this industry and for my clients is surround you and always be that higher level for my clients. I always need to be that higher level person so that my clients are trying to reach and attain where I'm at, right? I'm trying to give you that ladder to get to this level, right? Well, in order for me to do that, I have to keep increasing. I have to keep increasing. I have to keep increasing, right? And as you're increasing in the world, you start out with a coach, you know, that might be at the bottom rung. And then you know, okay, so now I've outgrown this coach. I'm at their level. I need to get to the next one. Well, a lot of coaches don't do what I do. They don't actually try and get to that next level so that your clients are always have something higher and higher. They just stay at the same level, which is why I just keep graduating to the next level, right? So, which is also why I pay $36,000 a year in coaching. As you get higher, it is a lot more expensive. But that's why I'm at the level of success I'm at in all of my three ventures, right? Is because I'm willing to put the money in. If you want to get to the next level, you've got to be willing to reinvest. It, like I said earlier, for me, when I first started coaching, it was a Hail Mary. I was about to go bankrupt. That was my Hail Mary to get me out of bankrupt. You know, just, this is it. Maybe this is what I need. And it was. And when I learned the power of coaching and the power of having a business coach or a financial coach in my corner, it was life-changing for me. It just, I will always always have a coach and part of it is that we need the accountability right even if I get to that high really high level where there's no other coach which there's always somebody but just let's say hypothetically I get to that high level where there's no other coach that can really teach me anymore I still need accountability I still need someone to answer to so I meet right now I actually meet with three coaches right I meet with uh, one, I actually meet with my financial coaching company, which is TLG Financial Foundations, which I'll have them on all the time. I meet with Christine once a month. I meet with Jeremy once a month, which are both part of TLG. Each one takes a different one of my companies, right? So I, I work with a coach on each company, and then I have my business advisors and my business coaches who are like the overall, like helping me with business in general. So I'm, and they all keep me accountable. So TLG keeps me accountable with my finances in both companies. Kelly Roach Coaching keeps me accountable with how is my, are my businesses structured? What am I doing? Am I working my businesses? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I serving my customers to the highest? That is really the biggest focus is how am I serving my customers at my childcare center and in my coaching company, right? It's just really focusing on that quality aspect. And so yes, I meet with three different coaches every single month. And that is really what takes my level. That's why I'm at this next level, because I'm willing to invest the time, the money, and the energy. And I'm always seeking out more information and to get better and better and better, right? And that is just vital. That is why when people ask me, I'm just, I'm willing to do it. And I'm willing to pass that on to you guys. Everything I learn, I take it and my coaches know I am transforming and rewriting it and really just regurgitating it to help you with your childcare centers, right? I make it childcare specific. And they all know I work with both companies on a regular basis to transform what we're learning for our industry. And it really has just uh, just skyrocketed my centers, my success, and that's what I bring back to you guys.
Um, so if you guys have any questions about my program, please send me a message, feel free to ask, and I can tell you like what my coaching program entails and what it looks like. And uh, please make sure that you're with me live today at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every day this week where I will be teaching you guys the enrollment process that I use in order to increase enrollment in your child care centers. This is exactly the process that I use and I, we maintain in order to maintain that 300 child wait list. So that's why when COVID hit and when all this, I didn't have to worry about enrollment. That's why I'm looking at opening another center here in town and I know the minute I open it, I will already be at capacity even through the pandemic. I know I can open another center and be at capacity. Uh, that's why when the pandemic and everybody had to shut down, my parents continued to pay. They, d I did not have to worry about pay, like who was going to pay me, how was I going to get paid, or any of that tuition because my parents know that they pay for enrollment. They do not pay for their their attendance. They pay for enrollment, and they also know that if they don't, and their child isn't in attendance, it's, and we do let them go. I don't have to worry about that, you guys. So many of you guys are so afraid to lose a client, right? You're so afraid the families are going to lose that you'll do anything to hold on to them. When you lose that mindset that you're so, of that scarcity mindset, right, and you have a mindset of abundance, and you realize that mm, it's okay, I can lose that one, I could just replace them tomorrow, parents suddenly get scared for their spot and they know that they have something really valuable and they'll do what it takes to hold on to that. They Once they really see that value, they do what it takes to hold on, which means they pay their bill on time, they don't show up late to pick up their child. I mean, there's always going to be that rule, right? I, I have 190 children enrolled, so there's always going to be more that 1%. But for the most part, they pay their bill on time, they are nice to your staff, they do what they need to do. They do their part as parents to stay in your center. Also means if they're out, I have parents whose children have been out since the pandemic started in March that are still paying every single week for their spot, you guys. Just let that sink in. I have families that have been out of my center from March and it is December that never stop paying for their spot because they are so afraid to lose their spot at my center. So that is the difference between having a scarcity mindset of fear that I can't lose a family to a mindset of abundance that there's plenty out there to replace them. When you get that mindset and you start passing that along to your families, you end up getting families that are willing to pay for six or seven months to have their spots because they're so afraid they're not going to get back in when it's time. So I will go over a lot more of that this week. I'm not going to get into it too much today, so be sure to catch me live. I love the live interactions. We get so much more. You get so much more engagement and so much more out of it if you're there live. So please join me live today at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time all week this week. Uh, if you can't, I understand our schedules. Watch the replay. Let me know that you're watching. Ask questions and engage. You will learn so much more if you just engage. So I hope everybody has a wonderful, fantastic week, and I hope everybody's ready for the holidays. They're here on us now, so have a great week, and feel free to message me if you guys need anything throughout the week. Thank you.